An economist has warned that free movement of labour among ASEAN member countries could be a precursor to cross-border crimes. Each member nation will have to deal with its own policy with regard to the free movement of labour and its repercussions prior to the implementation of the ASEAN Economic Community, slated to be at the end of this year. Chief Economist of IHS Incorporated Rajiv Biswas's fear is based on his observation of the EU, where the free movement of labour has given rise to the proliferation of cross-border crimes. So a criminal can enter Europe through their softest point, which may be Greece or somewhere, fly to Germany, no one will check your passport because, uh, or you can go by car, so there's no control. That's actually so it's very dangerous. Yeah. I don't think ASEAN is in any way ready for completely free movement of labour because you have huge disparities between countries. You, know, and you have most of ASEAN is very low income countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, uh, even Philippines, the income levels are very low. And it's not possible to just dismantle all the barriers on, on people movements when you have such extreme differences between countries like Malaysia and Singapore, which are relatively high, higher standards of living compared to the very low standards of living in other countries. This was suggests that the free movement of labour can be done specific to industries where there are skill shortages rather than be fully liberalised. I think any liberalisation on human capital would need to be industry by industry according to where there are skill shortages. And the test will need to be that whether there are shortages of skilled workers and there's a need for more mobility. He says opening out the borders where there are such huge gaps in income could create problems where huge influxes of low-income workers move to countries in hopes of greater financial gain. Rajiv isn't alone in his criticisms of free flow of labour policy, as local business community leaders such as Dato Sri Nazir Razak has earlier expressed frustrations over slow progress of certain issues that could hamper the AEC implementation. In a report last week, credit rating agency Moody's Investor Services reveals that ASEAN members have made little headway on a number of important elements on the AEC blueprint, including eliminating non-tariff barriers, increasing regional labour mobility and financial liberalisation. Jonathan Gunn, DHTV.